Clouds has a bonus mode called Spectral Madness, but despite the madness part of the name, it's actually capable of many subtle and useful effects. It's a phase vocoder, which uses fast Fourier transforms to break sound down into spectral bands, transform the spectral information, then resynthesize this back into sound. Most of the knobs and CV inputs have similar functions to the main granular mode, but size, density, texture and the trigger input all have new roles. Size now controls spectral warping. This morphs through a selection of polynomial functions, which are then applied to the spectrum. This shifts and wraps the frequencies with some strange effects, but turning it clockwise generally creates an increase in apparent pitch, and vice versa if you go anti-clockwise. Density controls how rapidly the short fast Fourier transform is updated. At noon, this is frequent enough to keep up with fast spectral movement such as percussion. Going anti-clockwise, this slows down until it almost freezes the spectrum. Going clockwise, cloud starts to randomize phases, creating a smeary, chaotic or reverb-like effect. Texture controls the number of frequency bands. At noon they are finely spaced, but as you go anti-clockwise, they become increasingly quantized, creating much more synthetic harmonic textures. Going clockwise, cloud starts to warp the spectrum towards higher harmonics. Density and texture work together to abstract the sound in both the temporal and frequency domains, going from almost neutral at 12 o'clock to floating abstract textures when anti-clockwise. Trig is now a gate input. When the input is high, Cloud applies one of four glitch algorithms to the spectrum. Every time the gate goes high again, another one of these algorithms is randomly selected. OK, let's move on to the demo. I have three sample sounds that I'll switch between to demonstrate the range of the effects. A drum loop. A sawtooth bass line. And a lo-fi vocal sample. Stereophonic high fidelity record. World's first compatible stereophonic high fidelity record. World's first compatible stereophonic. All of the effects in this record. mode have World's a slight delay from the dry sound. Stereophonic high fidelity record. World's first compatible stereophonic high fidelity record. World's first compatible stereophonic high fidelity record. World's first the pitch knob does what it says, but in a very different way to the granular mode. It's not strictly one volt per octave, and because it works by shifting spectral bands, sometimes the harmonics end up clashing slightly, though in an interesting way. I'm not that familiar with frequency shifters, but it sounds to me like something between that and standard pitch shifter. Stereophonic high fidelity record. World's first compatible 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 stereophonic high fidelity record. World's first. The size knob warps the spectrum, morphing in each direction between neutral for a simple polynomial transformation to more complex ones. Thank you. 
Stereophonic High Fidelity Record, world's first compatible stereophonic high fidelity record. Stereophonic High Fidelity Record, world's first compatible stereophonic high fidelity record. Between 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock, the general impression is a vague sense of emphasizing higher or lower frequencies. This is approximately complementary to pitch shift, so you can use the two together to warp the spectrum while keeping the apparent pitch. World's first compatible stereophonic high fidelity record. 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 World's first Density controls how rapidly the spectral analysis is updated. As you move it anti-clockwise, cloud starts to hold on to the spectrum for increasing length of time, creating smearing effects, and eventually drawing the input out into a long, nearly static drone. Compatible stereophonic high fidelity record. World's first compatible stereophonic high fidelity record. World's first. World's first compatible stereophonic high fidelity. Clockwise, the phases of each short FFT are increasingly randomized, sounding a bit like clattery early reflection reverb, and going into noisy distortions or cloudy granular effects. Stereophonic high fidelity record. World's first compatible 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 stereophonic high fidelity record. Text to knob and CV input. Control the number of frequency bands used for the FFT output. On a sawtooth, this can sound a bit like a low-pass filter. But this is really because the sound is being reconstituted from fewer and fewer sine waves. We can hear this more clearly if we turn up the resonance on the bass line.
On enharmonic sounds, you can hear the tinkling of individual sine waves, and it can more clearly sound like additive synthesis. It can sound eerie or organ-like or glassy, and is reminiscent at times of the Russian ANS synthesizer used on the soundtrack to some Tarkovsky films. Compatible stereophonic. Going clockwise of 12 o'clock, clouds shift the spectrum towards higher harmonics, sounding like treble boost, high pass filter, or an exciter. World's first compatible stereophonic high fidelity record. World's first compatible stereophonic high fidelity record. World's first compatible stereophonic Density high fidelity and texture record. work together, helping abstract the sound in two dimensions, temporal and frequency. Finally, the trigger input will introduce glitches to the spectrum whenever the gate is high. Every time you re-trigger it, it brings in randomly one of the four algorithms. World's first compatible stereophonic high fidelity record. World's first compatible stereophonic high fidelity record. World's first compatible. These might kill or enhance certain harmonics, filter out low frequencies, or create spectral trails by holding on to randomly selected harmonics. But you can't tell in advance which one you'll get, so in this case, you'll just have to embrace the spectral madness.